Today on A Blues, we're going to enhance our roto skills by using Photoshop in addition to After Effects. We're going to do roto on a stop motion sequence and learn how to export a sequence from After Effects to Photoshop. And by using Photoshop's frame animation, we will do rotoscoping while playing the sequence in a timeline. After we're done in Photoshop, we will learn how to export back to After Effects for completing our work. Right after this. Hey everybody, today we're into rotoscoping, so as you can see, there's a bell entering the frame, and there's a slide underneath it, so I need to remove this slide. There are some other problems here, the books aren't supposed to move. I got a few more problems here, let me show you. I could just mask out the bell, but I I'll still have problem with the shadow because the plastic is on the shadow, so I gotta remove it. I can use the clone tool for that, but let's try a different approach. Let's try to do this in Photoshop, but before we do, you can see there's a flicker here. It would be better to remove it before I go into Photoshop. I'm gonna use a GBD flicker. Analyze. So this is after using GB the flicker. Now this now is an image sequence. I need to export it to Photoshop. Send it to the render queue. I'm just gonna use PNG sequence RGB pre multiplied. Render. We'll resume this recording after it's done. And we're back in Photoshop. Let's import the image sequence. I'm going to use File and Scripts, Load Files into Stack. I'm going to use a folder and I'm going to choose this one. OK. It's going to load the files. Click OK. Now, what it does, it gives me a single file with all the frames one by one in the same file. Now this is the image sequence organized as Photoshop layers. What I want to do is have a timeline here so I can play this in Photoshop and work on it. So I'm going to use Create Frame Animation and it gives me only one frame. So I'm going to press here and make frames from layers. Now if I can play this you can see it plays backwards. I'm going to do reverse frames. Now it's a bit fast. I'm going to change it. Just select all and change it to... I need it to play in about 12 frames per second. So my calculation is it's this number. To move easily in Photoshop, I created a shortcut, edit, create keyboard shortcuts, and in panel options, timeline frames, I created these, these guys. Next frame, previous frame, first frame, and last frame. Just to easily navigate, so now we can press F2, F1, Shift F1 to go to the first, Shift F2, go to the, to the last. Let's create clean, clean frame. So the first frame is, it could be the clean frame. I'm going to duplicate it. Command J, call it clean plate. I'm just going to make it a smart object. So I can have an option to change it and it will be in every single frame. Let's put it on the bottom and create a folder. So what I'm doing now is looking for the first frame that you start to see the bell and you start to see the plastic. And then I'm going to put the clean plate, the smart object, on top of the original. I'm going to invert the mask and then I'm going to mask it in without 
to plastic. So this is the first frame. I'll put the clean plate on top of the original. I'm just gonna create a mask. Alt to reverse the mask. Now I'm gonna can work with the brushes. So this is B for brush. You can just delete previous frame. I'll drag, create a group. Once again, next frame. Alt, create a group. Next frame. So now I can play this. Alt. See what I said when I need more control. Now I have a shadow here. I can just delete it because it's going to delete the shadow as well. So I can create a layer. Just use the stamp tool, S for stamp, to take a spot here. that. So you now I can see the line next previous frame. Again, create a new layer, stamp, Let's see I have this, it's deleted too. You can see that I could do this in After Effects, I could use the clone tool in After Effects, but I have much more control here. I can use the healing brush. I'm not too worried about the books moving. I'm gonna mask them out in After Effects. I'm just worried about the surroundings of the bell to make a good shadow and to make the plastic that's close to the bell disappear. So I'm gonna keep doing this frame by frame. Let's see what happens when it's done. I'm done with masking. I play this out to see how it looks and looks fine. Now I want to export it to After Effects. I forgot to save the file, so let's save it. I save it as a PSB file because you can't save PSD if it's over 2 gigabytes. Now for exporting. Well, first, let's reverse the frames back. After I reverse the frames back, I can flatten frames into layers. And it's just going to create a layer out of every frame it had here. So I have the frames here. I can delete all the groups I've made. Now I have just the frames. To export it, I can use a script, file, export. Layer to files. Shot nineteen fix. Save it. Press OK. Run. Now oh, it's a script. It basically just saves every single layer as a JPEG. Now it's done. OK. Back to After Effects. Import. Nineteen fix. OK. Select one JPEG sequence and force alphabetical order. Import. Okay, now this is a sequence. Okay, we're not done because we have the book thing. Create a composition out of this. Now I can duplicate, freeze frame, the last one. So this will be my clean plate. Now, you can just use pretty big masks. Let's 
see. I'll give it a little feather. Okay. Just frame by frame. So now I'm just doing roto work. Pretty pretty big mask on top of the bell. And just doing it frame by frame. Just use this. And if I want to add just a little flicker, because I lost a bit of the stop motion feel, I can just create an adjustment layer, levels with individual controls, and RGB, I can just play with the gamma, do a random one, this, just a bit of random movement, just to get back some of the stop motion, this is just to give a little sense back, so I'm done. Hope you enjoyed this one. If you have any suggestions or comments, maybe better workflow for this type of work, just post it. Thank you. Till next time. Take care.